Welcome to week three. I'm Greg Benfield. Our focus this week is on group work, specifically how to design and support effective group work online. There's a bunch of reading to do, and as usual, we highlight the one key reading that you really should do this week. Because we think that theoretical frameworks are important to understanding and analysing educational problems and contexts, and because we think you've probably already engaged with the SALMON five-stage model as one such framework, this week we urge you to look at a different one, the Communities of Inquiry model. Specifically, we think it might be useful for you to think about the aspect of this model known as social presence. That said, we're pointing you to a number of easily digestible practical resources this week, and I'd urge you to do more than just the minimum reading, because this is a very complex topic, and a week is a short time to explore it. As well, and as usual, there are a series of activities to do, three in fact this week. The small group task in which you'll work in triads to prepare a short online presentation using a Google application is the one you really should do. This is an experiential learning task. We want you to reflect on your experience of working in the small group, standing back from that experience and thinking about the things you would need as a student in order to make this a fulfilling, engaging and well-supported task. Successful group work is underpinned by good design. Well-formulated, challenging tasks for students to do. Clarity about why group work is important for the task and how the task itself relates to the learning outcomes of the course, clearly specified outputs, realistic timelines, effective group size and composition for the task. We hope that you'll consider aspects of design in your small group task. As well as the benefits, there are a great many difficulties in facilitating good cooperative learning. The list on this slide is an example of some of them. I've worked on many very successful instances of online group work. In one example, it goes back in the, well, 10 years now. Every semester, we would have several hundred first year business students working on what we called the virtual task, in which randomly allocated groups of five or six students would work together to research and present their findings on a topic without ever meeting face to face. Years of running this task and many hundreds of students later, no groups failed to complete it. Only one module leader was ever needed to support it and students consistently reported satisfaction with it. One of the key design principles we used was explicitness about all aspects of the task. You can see on this page we had an assessment design that included a formative stage in which the module leader could check on groups progress. On this page, we have instructions about how to actually submit assignments using the assignment drop box in the virtual learning environment at the time. Knowing that students would be likely to leave everything to the last minute, we tried to give them good advice about what they should be doing each week of their task and what the key milestones would be. We provided them with clear instructions about the presentation formats to use and gave them very clear steers about the kinds of digital tools that they would need in order to prepare their presentations. In other words, we tried to anticipate every problem that students might have in doing the task and provide them with answers and supports in their online environment. Other readings that you might find very useful are two resources on peer learning or peer review. One thing that online learning makes pretty easy is displaying student work to other students. Because peer review is such a powerful learning technique, group activities designed around peer review are well worth considering in your own teaching. This resource gives you some good practice guidelines and a theoretical framework to use in designing this kind of activity. The research is pretty clear that where a significant problem with group work exists, it's usually around group assessment. We're going to focus in a bit more detail on group assessment in week five. In the meantime, there's a useful leaflet about group work assessment that I would recommend to you in the readings for this week. We can't just put off thinking about assessment of group work until week five because assessment of group work is integral to the design of good tasks. 
No matter how good the design, group work needs to be supported. The week three reading on group development and team roles includes reference to Johnson & Johnson's seven conditions for effective cooperation. It's important to bear these in mind always when one is designing and supporting group work. Bye for now. I hope you enjoy the week.